I think we're going to move to a, a little Q&A here. So um, we can talk about yes. whatever we want. Anyone have any specific questions? Well, I actually have a comment. Um, when you were talking mm -hmm. about the typewriter, the typewriter really was incredibly successful. Um, all the kids that visited the show house loved playing on Jennifer's typewriter. And typewriters are completely fun. But the thing that I forgot was that they had never seen one. <laughs> so, you know, I've always known typewriters. Have you ever typed on a typewriter? Um, my Nona has one that she writes poems on, so. Yeah. Anyway, that was a pretty funny thing. <laughs> Does anyone else have questions? <laughs> yeah? Um, I have a question about when you were talking about writing on walls and drawing on walls, and I would love to have that open for my kids in their rooms, but I'm also not sure like, if I should put up a whiteboard or if I should put up a chalkboard or um, you know, when they go off of the chalkboard, I mean, what's the best? I don't know. I'm just trying to think. And, and we've, had, we've had arguments with, actually, when we did one, a project for a nursery school where the director of the nursery school was very adamant that she didn't want any suggestion of writing on the walls because the kids should write on their paper and, and feared that somehow they were going to go amok and uh, start writing on all their you know, parents' walls. But I think for us, what, what's important about it is that there isn't this sense of frame and even in the cookie nursery where the elephant escapes the frame. Yeah. Um, and just that, that idea of not limiting yourself to what a, a preconception of what it should be. I mean, in terms of whiteboards and chalkboards, I mean, um, I've, I've used, um, I've had children use washable markers that are really great and they don't seem to make a mistake when they draw <laughs> and it always looks really good. You know, when we draw it could be a mistake but um, it's just fantastic and I invited my daughter and her friends to come over and um, it looked great. When we moved I felt so sad. So you did it on the wall? On the closet yeah. doors. Yeah. It looked really cute, yeah. Any other questions? Well, I actually want to comment on that. You know, people forget that you can just paint over, too. I mean, yeah. you know, there's, there's a certain amount of drawing on the walls that you might not want. But if you want to experiment, you know, you can really paint a wall pretty easily. And, you know, crayon is hard to cover, but lots of other things are just super simple. So, you know, I think being afraid of it is not warranted. At our house, my daughter just loves to draw on every kind of furniture, but we finally designated a place under a table, and she just goes under there and draws all the time, and it's pattern over pattern over pattern, and it's beautiful, and it's, I, you never see it. It's her private little world underneath yeah, her table on this wall, and you know, eventually we'll move the table and we'll look at it, but I mean, it just is layers, and she never bores of sort of drawing over it without changing it, so. So she's drawing yeah, she on the wall it. under the table, not on, not the table itself. On the, the table wall. itself. Right, no, uh, there's a wall right. it's against, oh. and nobody ever sees Sounds it. Sounds great. And she just goes over and over and over. I mean, it's thousands of days of... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you make me think that perhaps you could have something like huge floor-to-ceiling pads that... Um, yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. Like kind of... Um, panels that are um, washable. Mm -hmm. Washable or tear, tear offable. Oh yeah. Well what I did um, actually in the, in the cookie room was I, I had a vintage desk and I actually painted it with chalkboard itself, the whole entire desk. I uh, left a few elements of the wood so that not only did it serve as a station for doing work, but it also became exciting because she could actually write on the furniture and mark all over the furniture. And so that was an element that was really, it was good. I mean, also, you know, so we're talking about allowing kids to write anywhere, but I think we're forgetting that part of the fun of, sometimes, part of the fun of writing on walls is that you're not supposed to do it. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't have any solution here, but I think I remember back in my childhood that was thrilling to me. I found this spot behind a door in a hallway, and that was my spot where my mom never caught me. You know, I could always, I don't know, she either didn't look or maybe she just ignored me, but I thought I was getting away with something. You know, there, there's something so taboo about it that um, it can be really fun as well, and I guess it's a hard, a hard line to, to really walk well, but that is part of it, I think, for kids.
so all of these rooms look um, like they're very expensive. H how much does a, a budget play into each of the designers and how they approach? Um, I think it's very individual depending on um, what the client's budget is. Um, paint is not that expensive and I, I sometimes I find also in children's rooms, if you look around your own apartment, there are things that you can utilize into it. I, sometimes I like to give something special to the room that they could always have or a piece of grown-up furniture in there or something treasurable. But I think that you could do a cheap room or an inexpensive room that's creative as well as a very high fashion room with expensive pieces, don't you? Um, I think kind of what he's saying is, um, how did you afford, like, um, and the boy who wanted to turn his room into a donut need it, um, how did you get the money to actually build, the, um, kind of push the wall in and kind of make a little space where he could play and put the ladder there? How did you fit it all into your budget? Well, that family, um, the dad built that. They were really lucky because the parents are both artists and they're both craftsmen and so they could build that, which is a lot less expensive than hiring somebody to do that. Um, but uh, to to your point, of course things are expensive, and you know we can all look at things and, and know what's expensive and what's not. There are jillions of creative ideas, like yeah. Jen says. But also, I think if you think of putting things in your kid's room that are not that they're not going to grow out of in a year. You know, something that's. I mean, of course they want small chairs when they're small, but there are lots of other things, furniture, artwork, even toys that really, if you think about it can last for years if you plan well, if you plan with that in mind. You know, we did, I didn't point it out, but one of the stories that you saw is about trans, things that transform as they get older. So either height-wise, things that change, you can change, color-wise, you know, all kinds of ways that you can think of things that way. You can then invest in something for your kid's room that they're going to use for five or six years as opposed to, you know, one or two, which a lot of the, a lot of the furnishings, furnishings are really about. So I think if you spend wisely, you can really do pretty well. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, thank you. Uh, I was intrigued by the hanging bassinet. What is it made of? Uh, is it available? It's actually uh, we were happened, we were given it as a gift with our first daughter, and it's a Danish design. And I learned from uh, the Cooper Hewitt people that they're actually going to be featuring it in their felt exhibit. Uh, we the, the friends who got it for us actually got it. It, it was one sample that was sent to uh, New York, and we couldn't find any since then. But maybe since it's going to be in the show, there'll be uh, other opportunities to, to bring it to New York. Yeah. That uh, felt exhibit opens March 6th oh, great. here at the museum, and it will be one of the featured uh, felt pieces in that and show. And you, you did put a baby in it. Uh, yeah, our, our kids, it, it started out as a bassinet <laughs> where you would put the baby, but then as our kids grew older, it was actually really interesting because it was in the middle of our living room, and they would turn it, you know, they would put each other in it. And, as they got older and they could really use it as a swing and then it became a storage place for all, you know, toys, you know, a, to a floating toy box and it was, it was a fantastic, so grew. still a fantastic <laughs> piece. I think, um, I'm, I think, I don't know if you found this the same way, but a lot of people, when this was in the show house there, that felt bassinet and a lot of people came in and said the same thing, like, you really put a baby in there? Um, and you see a lot more hanging bassinets in Europe. Do you, have you found that? Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I don't know what, if what the difference is, you know, but um, I think it's I think it's doable and it's really okay. You just have to make sure it's you know secured. Yeah. I just thought of a, a, a variation of the wall pad that uh, I thought of before, and that could be kind of like a floor to ceiling scroll where you could roll roll the paper and roll it up at the bottom. And yeah, they sell. It would be big enough to to feel that you're writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. I like this is sort of like a design session. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so you're say, when you were saying before um, how things get older and they use it for different things, <coughs> it actually matters um, how the thing um, expands, uh, how they grow older and what they like more. So if they like playing outdoors more, Maybe you could get a specific thing that will suit them more. I have a question for Satchel. What's the oldest toy you have? I'm not sure. I think it's when I was, um, 
I think it was one of my stuffed animals when I got I got when I was about first born. It's a little green dog. It's pretty old. You yes, still play is. with it? Yes, I do. Oh. <laughs> There's about three holes in it, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I have a question that sort of relates back to the cost. Um, th there's been a little bit of a debate. Do, do you find people want to spend more on their kids' rooms or less than they do on their own rooms? Uh, While well, everyone's thinking, because they have more practical um, experience um, than, than I do. Um, I, at Cookie, we've found that um, people really, I don't know if it's more or less, but I think you know people are more willing to spend on their kids when they might not on themselves. And also, grandparents often come into the picture. Um, I see that a lot. I don't know if you guys yeah, do. Yeah, I, I find that it depends what the item is. If it's something that's really special, they don't even think about the price. If it's something that the child, that they can last for a long time, that they could grow with. If it's a very special piece of an art or um, a desk they could have for a long time. Don't, don't you agree? Yeah, yeah, and I feel as well with um, magazines like Cookie and blogs uh, that are geared towards design for children. Um, it creates more of an awareness of, of the things out there that can be done for children. Um, and so I think, I think people are willing now to, to do more for their child. Not necessarily, I don't think it's a price tag, but I definitely think there's a, a, a considered um, uh, design that goes into kids' spaces more so now than before, ever before. If it's the perfect item, then. <laughs> yeah. You think about two years ago, I heard a statistic that the kids' furniture market was growing faster than any other part of the furniture market. So there's obviously, again, I agree, I don't think it's a price tag thing, but I think there's a lot more interest in raising the level of design for kids' spaces, and um, so we're seeing that in the market as well. I don't recommend you do this, but um, to, fi to find out what, um, if you're not really sure what your child really likes, if they own a diary, you might want to take up, <laughs> flip it through pages and see what they actually kind of are interested in. I don't know, maybe a boy has a secret love of ponies. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> I don't know where the mic is. The mic is coming to you. I have a question for Satchel. Yes? Um, when was your space designed, and how long have you lived with it? I'm not really sure when it was designed. I think I was about around seven. And I, you can tell by um, my bed doesn't have that cover anymore on it. Um, Another so question, just a follow-up, is how has that space evolved as you've used it? And is there anything that was designed initially that has been transformed and used for another purpose? Well, actually, it started out as um, a place where I could just, as I said before, I could just get away from Nora. But, um, <laughs> I, but actually, um, then it got transformed into um, using it as um, for playing hide-and-seek, and then it turned into just a place where I could hang out with my friends. And so it kind of evolved as I got older on things of bigger kid uses. I have a question for Satchel as well. Has the experience of having your a space designed for you influenced your idea of what you want to do in the future and what might that be? Yes, I've kind of... Um, on thinking of being someone that designs actually um, children's space spaces, I've, it's kind of intru it's intrigued me. Yes. Yes, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just add one thing um, to the person who helped design Satchel Space, um, and that is, we really thought that when no Satchel's little sister was born, that he would very much want to have his own space that was away from her. And um, how that ch space has changed is that they actually do like to spend a lot of time together. And Nora could not go up into the loft. It has two ladders. It has an entrance in the hallway um, that looks like a closet that you open the door, and there's a ladder there. And then there's also a ladder in Satchel's room. But 
So one thing that was a problem was that Nora was too young to climb this ladder, and she wanted to climb it much too young. So then we had to you know, barricade it. We had to like put up a chair so that she couldn't get up there. So we'd created kind of this problem because that he could climb up and be there, and she desperately wanted to be up there. And um, I think that uh, they actually do want to spend more time together than we thought. And then S Satchel's also had times when he was a little bit younger where that was a lonely place for him. So here, you know, we kept thinking, oh, this is some place that he's going to love, love, love to be. And it was high and, and away from everyone. And he actually didn't want that when he was four years old, to be high and away from everyone. So we, we <coughs> keep learning about this space, like how what we had originally intended it for, but that you know the two of them will make it into whatever that they want it to be. So Also, that actually um, it helps when I have a lot of friends. So when I, um, at my ninth birthday, I had about 10 friends over. And it helped because my um everyone wanted to be in my room so um s like half of them went into my loft room and so the loft kind of helped instead of making it the f um instead of making it longer to fit more people you can actually make more floors to fit more people i think to um sherry's point about you know maybe not being able to anticipate exactly what the um i think you just never know. I think you know designers and parents try something, and you know sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You know, I, I think it's obviously a great space for you now. Um, when I was a kid, I have three siblings, and at some point, my mother decided that one of my sisters really needed alone space. I have no idea why. So she created this space in the attic that was really special. I mean, I was so jealous. It had like rainbows and, and, and a blanket on the floor and like pillows and, and my sister's guitar was sort of suggestively leaning against the wall and um, I was so jealous it looked so great and I said to my sister how come you get this what happened she said I have no idea and she didn't want it she never went up there I mean you know I thought it was like the best thing in the world occasionally she would play guitar there but um, yeah it was just one of those things you know my mom really thought she needed alone time and she never used it so I think you know you just have to try it out out and see what happens. So it's like um, making an old space into a new space. Even though it, it's added, your the child doesn't see it that way. Exactly. It, they just see it as the old attic that it was. <laughs> maybe that maybe that was true. They, they don't see it like with the wallpaper or anything. When they walk in, instead of what you see, all that pretty toys and all those things. They walk in and see an attic with dead rats. <laughs> that's why I, I think they don't see it the way you do. I think that's why. Everyone has their own tastes. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Satchel's sort of looking for a job at Cookie. <laughs> I think Satchel should have his own TV show. <laughs> Satchel's actually been on TV, um, on Animal Planet, yeah? I have. <laughs> Any more questions tonight? I'm not sure how we're doing for time. We okay? Okay. Yep. Just a quick practical question. I'm at that phase now where I've got to move from the original decoration to the seven, eight middle things. What are the key things I should be thinking about as I'm decorating as they move into that kind of middle school mm -hmm. years kind of stuff? Seven, eight, I mean, for the, they're, moving, the, like, mm -hmm. they're, they're in the rooms they were in from when they were babies. Oh. And we didn't have the benefit of you all at the time. And so now we're, you know, we're building a new house and there's some space and I want to do it right in a way that will be fun and they can grow into and we're not going to replicate the things that we have where we are. So there's there got to be like three key things I need to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, I know scale and, you know, proportion. But I'm trying to figure out how we bring, I don't even know how to put a desk in where they do homework. All of a sudden there are new things mm -hmm. they have to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get them in there in a way that's, you know. Well, again, I mean, I think there are a lot of great tips with scale and color and there are things that people talked about. But I know, like, for instance, Jan's daughter, Jan put in a desk. Your daughter's 10, yeah? Yeah. And, um, Lola doesn't want to work at a desk, right? Yeah. I mean, so it, it was complete. I think so much of it is personal. Um, yes, I mean, they are doing homework. Most kids do want a desk at this point, but. She wants to work at the kitchen table or she wants to work on her bed. We, um, I have a beautiful big board and she works on that. 
Do your children share a room? No. No. So I think um, the, key, um, the key to that is actually <coughs> finding what your child likes and then actually um, putting that touch to the kind of so if you're getting a desk, then you should kind of decorate it on what your child likes, so it'll seem more roomy to them. Definitely ask them for, I mean, involve them in the process, absolutely. Ask them, you know, uh, to think about an inspiration, like I was saying before. Find, you know, look through magazines, find something that, that sparks their interest of what they would like to, you know, help in creating their space. When we were walking on our way to school and we were talking about, okay, so for painting the girls, what would be, this is what she said to me, oh, I would love it if it were mint green with black polka dots in the center of the black polka dots were pink. And I thought to myself, now this is going to be hard. <laughs> so what she, I don't exactly that's know, like at what point, like, do you do that? <laughs> do you do that? Well, I think, I think it kind of goes to what, what you guys were talking about. Of like, it's not, or actually, I think it might have been you about the color pink. Um, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that specific pink that makes her, I guess, or, but finding another color alternative. The room doesn't necessarily have to be black. Yeah. But you can find other ways to incorporate that into the space that's not so over the top and in your face. And maybe you that's can, just an accent. Exactly. Yeah. You can do that pattern in on one wall or one piece of wall, mm -hmm. you know, and really excite her. Um, I think just seeing their ideas in their room at all, it, you know, in, whether it's the entire room or just a bit of it, I think is pretty exciting. So you might want to try it. I think it's, it could be as simple it's, as getting one of the round paper lanterns and letting her paint this thing and do the polka dots and then that be the one lighting piece that has her exactly what she wanted and then the rest of the room kind of completes itself. And maybe you or should when edit you the asking pink. Your, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Or when you were asked when you were, when you just said um how do I do that? You could just buy mint green wallpaper and kind of paint black dots and then let your child put the little pink dots in them. I actually think the combination is quite beautiful. <laughs> I happen to know this child. <laughs> but, but I think one, one of the things uh, that we've been talking about a lot is no matter how much you plan it, they're going to use it in a different way anyway, which is part of the, part of the fun of designing for kids. Yeah. I think the black could be very grounding, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you have to, you know, you always have to, ha I think I'm leaving. So no? Oh, it's going in my ears. Um, you always have to start with the basic thing. So if you have things from a nursery, you have to get rid of those anyway. And then you could just start fresh and new. I think it's sort of overwhelming to think of a whole new room at once. And sometimes some, you know, one, one idea that's going to generate the next idea is just a really nice, easy <coughs> in. So maybe, you know, if this is the thing that she's really adamant about that you like as well, maybe this is your way in and then the room sort of, you know, might follow that in color or in shape or, you know, kind of, I feel like that however you come into it is fine, but it's overwhelming to people to think about the whole room at once, yeah. you know, do you find that with your mm -hmm. clients? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, any, any entry point is, is a fine entry point, you know, and just you go from there to there and see, you know, one leads to the other. Does that make sense? Um, like she said, um, you don't have to do the whole room at once. You can do like half of the room, ask your child, is there anything else you want your room to be Col colored or patterned? And then if they say something different, you can paint the other half that color. <laughs> or you can split it into quarters, it doesn't really matter. I just had one more question for the other designers, not so much for you, Satchel, for a minute. <laughs> um, and that is just that, I'm wondering, you know, I know that we're talking about children's rooms and their specific spaces, and I'm wondering if people are coming to you, I mean, children are in all kinds of public spaces all the time, and I'm wondering if people are coming to you and asking you, look, we have this space, it's a public space, children use it too, how can we make it accessible to children as well as adults? And I know that when we did our home, I kept reminding the contractor and the architect that what is it like to be in this room if, if you're three feet tall? Because we're an, we're an apartment, we're not a house with, with room after room after room. You know, we live in, all of us, in this living room all the time. What's it like to be in here if you're three years old? And I'm wondering if people come to you or if you're specifically always focusing on just a children's room. 
I, I don't, and I and I'm I I'm just gonna speak on for my own home and and how we've incorporated the, our lifestyle and design aesthetic and just functionality for a four and a half year old, and um, we have in our dining room it also serves as our office space, but it also um, serves as a creative art space for our child where there's a big long table where she could do her artwork. Um, you know, and, and that's how that's incorporated in that room. And in the living room, we have um, a very kind of low seat that houses, you know, a dollhouse. And then the, the drawers that are on her level hold her movies and her things. So in every space, uh, like in the kitchen, for instance, she has the left bottom crisper drawer that she goes into, she gets. I mean, we, of course, control what goes in that drawer. But she thinks she has this control and this choice, which is great. Um, and she's there's a piece of her in every single room that we have, and it's it's very easy solutions that don't require major <coughs> renovations to include your child. Just it's kind of like the slide you were talking about in, in uh, the family in Morocco, is that it, or Marrakesh in, in London? The slide, the slide next to the staircase. No, no, no. The uh, everything. Oh, the yes, Moroccan. yes, yes, Morocco. Yeah, yeah, where everything was just kind of a little bit lower, um, and I think that's. But I, but I also think, I mean, one of the wonderful things with all the cookie uh, images uh, is that the rooms aren't screaming that it's only for a child. And I think all the rooms that we right. saw tonight, uh, you know, they'd make a perfectly good adult's bedroom, too. And it's not this idea that somehow they reach a certain age and then you have to change their room. Um, and for instance, when we were working on the gallery, we didn't show you the gallery part, which is upstairs, which is this you know sleek, minimal art gallery. And I think for us, that was a really interesting project because you could make a sophisticated kids room that would delight children, but adults would also go in there and not feel like they're suddenly thrown into a toy store. I mean, I think that that balance is more interesting than just, you know, kids room here. I mean, and it also depends on, on you know, if you want your kids in the space or not, because we also have clients who don't want to mix the two, mm -hmm. and they want mm -hmm. the kid's wing at this end, and they want to be able to close the doors <laughs> and have nothing to do with it in their adult life. So I think that is also a personal. You know. I just have one small question. How do you have to get the um, parents' permission to do what the, like a, a little pattern that the child wants too much, or can you kind of no, it's I don't a collaboration. Mean like it's a collaboration. It's 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 uh, the opinion of the child, the 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 wishes of, of all the parties involved, and how you can kind of make a cohesive design that speaks that language. So, yeah, I think everybody has to be on on board. Yeah. yeah. You know, all these rooms had very few things in them, and as a real parent, <laughs> your kids bring home stuff every single day and trying to throw it all out is incredibly time consuming so where's all the mess in these houses you know i mean i can only speak for my images and you know you guys can talk about yours but um a lot of those rooms were real rooms and that really is how they looked i mean i have a parent in here whose room i showed and it really did look like that the one with the disco ball i mean it, it did look like that and i think you know there are those hours when you know maybe between getting home from school and you know dinner where it's just a complete mess and you know of course that's not when we snap the photograph but um yeah i mean i think i think i think a lot of these rooms really do look like that it's just a matter of where the stuff is and how often it gets you know put away and i know a lot of kids that are taught to participate in putting things away i don't know but i'm, I'm a big believer of an editing process I think it's really important to go through children's things. And, um, you know, um, we live in Brooklyn now, and uh, very often when my daughter has toys that she doesn't use or things, I just put them on my stoop and people just take them. It's really nice. It's a great way to get rid of things <laughs> that you don't feel guilty. Take take. Yeah, it's but important. it's really important. Um, there are things that we save that are very, that she treasures, and um, for other clients I've worked with as well. You just have to force them to go through it. Jen does a little bit of toy management in her uh, work. <laughs> she, she does. You actually did a really great thing with the um, art collage, with taking oh, on the yeah. artwork. Yeah, with and kids. I did that. Yeah. But um, I think most parents they end up saving the artwork as well. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, we have time for just one the, more um, question. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that was a really good point. I'm just wondering how much the role of storage does play 
in design because or in your design work because obviously you know the apartment or the house has so many closets and you can only work with with that you know obviously but how do you what are some creative things that you've seen or that you've done in terms of incorporating more storage because I do think the reality of it is is that you know there's just more and more stuff and and you can edit a lot but it just keeps coming in so are there any interesting solutions that you've seen I mean obviously there's a lot of under the bed stuff and there's you know putting more shelves in but are there some other creative things that you've I think it's very individual um, I just worked on a boys um, on this brownstone and the boy actually had very little clothes <laughs> really little clothes and his toys took up most of the storage space. He had big huge drawers under his bed for his big Legos and then um, we built shelves under the windows and all his collections are there and then big closet in his room instead of having clothes, all his toys. I mean he just happened to have, you know, he wears just regular things, things are stored, his clothes. Um, but I think again for toys I don't think kids should have so much because they don't even play with it all. Um, I also right? think that this is an issue for parents as well. I mean, for parents, for adults. I mean, there, we all have so many issues about organizing and storing our own stuff, and people have storage spaces, and there are article upon article upon article in magazines about what to do with your stuff, you know. So I think, of course, kids bring it in, and, and they're just naturally collectors and curious and love things and get attached to things, but um, we are too, and I think it's maybe um, worth investigating how, you know, everyone in the family kind of deals with their stuff and where they put it because it's it's not just kids. I think it, it crosses I mean, I think over. it's hard when you have kids at different stages because I have a newborn and a toddler, so, you know, I didn't see the leapfrog table anywhere, but, like, you need some of these things just developmentally and then, you know, I can't wait to get rid of them, but where do they go in the meantime just because, you know, the reality is, is you know, I got it as a gift and it works, so I kind of need mm -hmm. to put it somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. so I don't know how to fit that in and make it or hide it. <laughs> yes, it's like um well um if you have kids at different stages like you said um if they can be v um little far apart like one's 5 and one's about 7 or 6 or it can be kind of a big difference like I am with my sister. My sister's only 4 and I'm 9. So it's kind of a big difference for my mom and dad to remember both things on what we've told them. So it's kind of a matter of how um, how you remember. I, th I think it might, might interest you to, if you can go in your house and find maybe a closet that isn't as utilized as much as you think or that houses winter coats and in the summertime you can, you know, store them somewhere else, um, to maybe restructure that closet, you know, and break down the leapfrog table yeah. until you need it and kind of, you know, get the nice bins, you know, be anal about it, label them, and then, you know, pull them out when you need to and then when the, the baby's done with all of that. Donate them. Get rid of it. <laughs> when that, when you when you have a, um, I'm I'm talking to the contractors now. Um, when you have when you decorate different rooms, you every room is individual. So do you remember actually every room and like kind of pick your favorite you like, and then you kind of explore on how you did it just to see. Um, and you're thinking, wow, this is really good. <laughs> Are you asking me to reflect <laughs> on a room that I really I'm like? Asking every contractor. <laughs> I think that is a good, a good, a good jumping <laughs> yes. off point yes. for us all to think of. Take, take with you on your travels back home. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Again. Well, thanks everyone. All the <laughs>